college. It's a place where you discover new things about yourself. A place where you find out what you want to do in your life. It is tabbed as the best time of your life. And make friends and memories that will last a lifetime. It's a new start. It's part of growing up. It is a chance to become who you have always wanted to be. But there is a catch. On college campuses all across the country, uh, students leaving class today to demonstrate and protest. They're taking part in protests uh, for free tuition. Student debt in the U.S. is now bigger than debt from credit cards and auto loans. And today, students across the country are protesting rising student loan debt levels. Both the growing worries and criticism over college costs and student debt. Everyone who goes to a public college or university should be able to do that without having to borrow a penny. People think it's absurd that our young people are leaving school deeply, deeply in debt and young people can't afford to go to college. States also need to do their part by making higher education a higher priority in their budgets. And colleges and universities have to do their part by working to keep costs down. And one thing is increasingly clear. By the time they graduate, most students are going to be leaving with a lot more than just a tacky polyester robe. They'll be leaving with this. College, that's the time when you have the chance to experiment, when you have the chance to open yourself up to new things, when you can discover who you are and who you might become. Tell me one thing. Yes. Is my daughter going to have a job and she's not going to come back home after it's done? The very concept of the institution of higher learning is about to be broken. Our nation's combined student loan debt has now hit one trillion dollars. Why do we want education? Why do we want it now? The rise in student tuition is unsustainable. We cannot continue to treat student loan debt as an individual issue. The government will make $184 billion in profits off of our kids who are trying to get an education. What kind of a society do we want to be? America has been all about critical thinking. There has to be a change coming. Today's global economy is exceptionally competitive. Therefore, if America is to have a strong economy, then we are obligated to have the best educated workforce in the world. The payoff from a college degree is tremendous. It increases your chances of getting a job, even in a sluggish economy. We saw this in 2012, when the unemployment rate for high school graduates rose to 8.1%, and for college graduates, it fell to 3.9%. In addition, college graduates on average earn over 90% more than high school graduates. So it should be no surprise that young people today feel the need to pursue a higher education. Therefore, many are left wondering what is the cause of this rise. Simply put, it is the business model of supply and demand. As the demand for college increases, colleges have two choices. They can either increase acceptance rates or they can increase the cost of tuition. And you can see this in full effect each year. In the 2014-15 school year, the average tuition increase was 3.7% at private colleges and 2.9% at public universities. With the constant increases in college tuition, students need ways to pay for college. But these ways aren't always the best. Students who choose to take out student loans will usually end up paying interest on those loans after they graduate. Statistics show that 44% of students are expected to still owe money at the age of 50. Students can go down another route and apply for scholarships, but there are only a limited amount of scholarships available, and there are usually strict requirements for each. To cut costs, parents have set certain expectations for their kids. 54% expect their kids to take online courses. 50% will ask their kids to live at home and commute. 54% intend to ask their children to work part-time during school. 
40% will encourage their children to attend public schools, and 23% will encourage their children to graduate in fewer semesters. These are all very logical financial plans, yet it shifts away from the idea that college is a time of absolute freedom and opportunity for self-discovery. At Ohio universities, working full-time for minimum wage year-round would leave today's students about $3,200 short of being able to pay for their tuition, fees, room, and board. 30 years ago, the minimum wage was enough to pay all the same college bills and still have $3,500 left over. Paying for college has become increasingly out of reach for the average attendee. Student loan debt has quadrupled since 2003, making it a nearly impossible goal for graduated students to live independently. Attempting to survive in this difficult economy leaves young adults no other choice but to seek financial help from their family. If the government took more control and colleges stopped worrying about who had the nicest facilities and started investing in the quality of their students' education, and they make college more affordable, then students won't have the burden of paying off college debt for a majority of their life.